Thanks for having me, Nick. Welcome to Eagles Canyon. First time at the racetrack? Yes, first time, except for maybe I was a troubled adolescent. Uh, maybe some questionable streetcar racing uh, <laughs> in Mesquite where I grew up. This will be a little different, <laughs> a little different. How'd you get into sports car racing? So as a, as a kid, my, my dad and I always had a real passion for cars, still do. Before work, he would take me for a, a ride around the block and I was even at four years old, I was learning how to use a six speed gearbox with him and how to use a clutch and all that stuff. And then finally, uh, a, a, good, a good family friend took us out to the racetrack to show us his, his race car. And we were hooked. My dad started, my dad and I started going to different tracks and I'd just ride shotgun with him. And I was sitting in the passenger seat learning, but he was actually driving. Long story short, we found out about karting. Go-karting is basically where professional drivers learn their craft. They, they learn how to pass, they learn how to set up a car, how to, um, how, just what a general race weekend looks like um, and how intense they can be. Yeah, and you uh, competed in Le Mans, right? So in 2016, my, I guess my, uh, I got back into it. I was racing at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. Um, we finished second that year, I believe. Um, and then we followed it up the next year um, after a few more podiums uh, in, in 2016. We followed it up with uh, my first win at the Rolex 24 Hours. So we, wow. we actually became the first. Uh, Dabool is my day job. Yeah. Um, so I'm there most of the time. But um, we became the first authorized Rolex dealer to win the 24 Hours of Daytona. So I'm actually I'm wearing the, that watch today. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like a great watch from here, from here. What was your first foray into the into the business world? So my mom was always like the general manager of something. So she never was the owner. Or she wasn't even an executive. So uh, it was a lot of it was a restaurant business. I would be that annoying kid that would go up there, but you know, you know, the owners would kind of take to me and show me all their nice things that we didn't have growing up in Mesquite. And so it kind of just, I kind of saw the way they treated the owner and I saw the all the shiny things that the owners always had. And I just knew I really wanted that. That's kind of the first thing impression I had is I remember even just when the new Jeep Cherokees came out or the 911s changed their body style. A guy that's passed away now, David Terry, he owns Sirius Best Control. He had both, you know, both of those. And I just opened my brain to, so much more than you know, kind of where I came from. My first business was I started cleaning pools, and I learned how to do it. And I'm like doing all the work for a fraction of the pay. Yeah. And I just decided that I would try to try to do that myself. We picked the most affluent neighborhoods that were really? you know, within kind of a distance of where we grew up, and uh, knocked on doors, and uh, just you know built a clientele. That's really cool. So you're in the family business. Uh, I know that uh, the Bull's been around. It's got a legacy of its own. And uh, how, did, was it always a plan for you to go into the business? You know, I always had an interest in the business. When I graduated college, um, I actually started a digital marketing firm, um, and I ran that. It was a it was a great business. We had a lot of fun. What do you, I, I joke? It was almost like a very quick MBA and yeah, having yeah. your own business, but it gave me a whole new respect for what I was joining. Yeah. Um, which happened when we opened our second store in Houston. I couldn't leave. It's just, it's just a very happy business. But what about you? I was just an employee working for a company called Earthlink back in '99 in the internet days, and you know, kind of had a knack for it, and they promoted me to Silicon Valley, to the business side of the, the internet. And back then, internet was really expensive and <laughs> very complicated and very technical. It wasn't like plug and play like it is today. Uh, and from there, went into oil and gas to a family friend and uh, built my first flagship, which is Tex Energy Holdings, wow. and parlayed that into today, which is Teamwork Commerce, which is a retail software. So we're very similar. Yeah. We've got a retail business. We cater to retailers, yeah. trying to make their life more efficient. Is your business today is still the same way? It's very customer, customer experience focused, like like Avondale. Like Avondale, it's the same thing. It's about the customer, uh, and it's changing in technology. We cater to, uh, especially retailers across the globe. We've got offices in eight different countries, uh, as well as we're localized in in 12 countries. That will be more than 20 this year. Nowadays, people want to buy from the phone, buy from a computer. They want everything immediately. They they want real time everything and you're going to need analytics on the business side of it, order management systems and instead of just back when your family probably started, just yeah. storefront, you know, maybe some ads in the paper. Yeah. And the, the Bull family, I know you're big into philanthropy. Uh, what are some of the, well, where does that drive come from or what are some of the initiatives that you guys you know, are important to you or that have been in the past? It's probably the same for most, but we like to focus on causes that are that are close to us, that we have an emotional attachment to. Um, we work closely with Camp, camp Sweeney. Um, which is uh, it's a kids camp where children with type 1 diabetes go and learn how to manage that disease. Um, we've also done a lot with uh, different forms of cancer. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. It's, 
I think 15 years or 14 years ago now wow. almost, which is great. Yeah. What about you? Yes, yeah, it's the same thing. It's changed over the years. Um, you know, it used to be just good, big causes and macro, and then it kind of shifted to where I wanted you know nonprofits that I really felt like I could help them self-sustain themselves through more mentorship programs. So uh, my first one that I, that I really made a you know very conscious effort towards that was a one called Ali's House that was teen mothers that usually are from lower demographic social backgrounds, and from there it's kind of parlayed into just various you know individual causes. But most recently. Uh, my software company, Teamwork Commerce, we launched uh, Teamwork Cares. But um, yeah, the idea is that uh, a young owner or an owner that, that maybe, you know, for example, he owns a barbecue place or owns, you know, some business, whatever it is, you know, we have people from marketing backgrounds and accounting backgrounds and C-level executives that can really, you know, enlighten these people and, and really maybe change their landscape. That's really cool. What would be your go-to car these days? Anything you wanted. Oh man, that's a really hard question to answer. Um, I've always loved the, the look of a 911. Um, I've raced the GT3R version of, of that car, and I think there's just something so usable and uh, iconic about it that yeah. I that I it's something you can enjoy every day, but it will also make people's mouth drop open on on the racetrack which i really like what about you well i think it's going to be either what avondale provided the the mclaren or now the <laughs> 911 that you just mentioned on my left so well now that you're about to find out what the 720s can do maybe we'll uh that maybe that'll that'll sway you yeah you don't have to threaten me with a good time sounds, <laughs> sounds, sounds exciting to me i like it let's see what they can do i'm ready i'm so ready let's go you should, you should only be a little nervous i think i'm gonna be more nervous when you drive <laughs> that's that's about right all right. So. Okay. Okay, let's go. So here you can see we're on pit lane. Yeah. There's going to be a white line that you're going to blend over here. It's just nice and smooth. Everybody thinks driving a race car is about moving fast and making quick reactions, but it's really all about being smooth. So here you would normally go out wide and come in if you're going really yeah. speed, right? And then you'd let it float out here. Yeah. And then you'll go tight again to the next curb. There we go. And then it's going to be a right corner here. It's quick, isn't it? Wow, that's amazing. So in racing, they call it the racing line. Basically, there's an optimal line to follow around the racetrack, and you brake as late as you can, um, and then you merge that in smoothly with a smooth turn in, release the brake, roll to the apex, get back on the throttle. Um, and you'll see on the outside of the track here, A, you see a lot of uh, like skid marks, right? Yeah. But it's almost like a different color. And that's because it's dirty out there. It, it becomes cleaner and cleaner the more people run on the racing line. I, I, I like to think of it as a numbers game. Everything you look at is data, and that's yeah. kind of where I know that when you guys are retail, it goes, you know, retailers are looking at data all the time, yeah. analyze statistics. And uh, my business at Tabool, we're, we're looking at how we manage that customer experience, just how Avondale does, you know what I mean? It's yeah. about kind of getting the most out of it and making it special. Yeah. It is fun though, especially when you, like you said, the 720, it's, you don't, you don't see something like this too often and you're now, you're, yeah. now you're going to take it on the racetrack. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, I'm a little <laughs> nervous. I'm gonna hold on. I'm still gonna go easy, because it's yeah, not my no, car and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But... This thing almost takes off in the back whenever you accelerate. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you'll feel like, yeah. So you kind of stay tight, right it's along, right oh, on the curve. Gotcha. And then you'll fade out. Yeah, look at that little. Keep it in the out, middle. Yeah. And then nice and tight here. A little different, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot different. A lot different. And then you kind of breathe the throttle, give it a minute, and you gotta wait for the front, and then you can accelerate. <laughs> I hear myself straining. Feels so uncontrollable. I have to say though, the car gives a lot of feedback. You can tell this car has a carbon tub. Yep. Um, and that's what all the race cars now have. The feedback it gives you through the wheel is different to like what a lot have, you know? So you can lean on how stiff it is. See, it's all about kind of maximizing all the road. Yeah. And then you're trying to make sacrifices between each corner to set up for the next one and make it perfect, yeah. you know? Yeah, we're gonna cut, guys. You can take the frame here. No, I'm not ready. I heard that. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> 
Thanks, Nick. I mean, it's it unbelievable. Yeah, of course, man. It's a general rush for, for me. I don't know about you, but... Anytime <laughs> being at the racetrack is yeah. a good day.